We're going to be looking at uh, trust this morning. That's going to be the overall theme of what we're looking at. And we're going to go on a little journey through the Bible, a little journey through the dictionary, and a little journey through some of my thoughts that gets a bit dangerous. Um, So we're going to spend the next few minutes looking at this topic, and we're going to be focusing on trusting in God. Um, So we'll be, um, I've got to be honest, um, so when I was researching this, I found it really challenging, really difficult, um, because it's such an important word to my faith, to the Christian faith. And not only when you dive into the topic of trust, is it so broad and so deep, and this message could have gone anywhere, but actually it's one that is, is really important to me, uh, and, uh, and really got me revisiting my roots in, in my trust in God. So um, if we think about what it means to trust in God, it, it usually defines what it also means to be a Christian. So that's the topic of what we're looking at this morning. And um, to kick off, for those that have heard me speak before, I do like a good backstory and a bit of history. So we're going to do uh, a little bit of that before we move forward. And um, just to explain the Bible itself, the Bible um, is estimated to have been written over a period of about 1,400 years. And some of those original manuscripts are dated all the way back, uh, written um, over 3,500 years ago. And while we're talking about this, well, it's because we're going to look at a bit of the language of trust. And the original language of the Bible is split into some um, ancient uh, Hebrew and Aramaic and Greek. And when you start diving into the translation of the original word and how it translates into what we understand as English today, you come across some really, really interesting points. So in Hebrew, the word for trust transliterates as emet which you can see right at the very top there, as along with the actual um, Hebrew word there. And what I find interesting about this is that emet doesn't only translate to the word trust. It also translates to truth and true, faith, faithful, and belief. It, it's that, that one word splits out quite broad into our modern English language. So from that array of words trusting or emet in God expands to knowing God to be true or right, also having a faith or, or a faith in a faithful God, uh, believing or belief that there is a God. And there's far too much to unpack all of that today. So our main focus is going to be on, uh, on trust. So we've had a little look at where the word trust um, origins in the Bible and what does the dictionary define trust as? So in Britannica, it says um, belief that someone or something is reliable, good, honest, and effective. So we can put our trust in another person. We can put our trust in an object. We're going to come, come to some of that later. And I really love what um, dictionary.com it, um, brings out here. It says confidence, confident expectation of something And I particularly like that expectation, that word expectation there, because it's so true. Trust heavily relies on a corresponding prior experience. And you're all sat on a great analogy of this. You're all sat on a chair. You can trust the chair you're sat on, that it's going to hold you up, that it's going to not just spontaneously fall to pieces based on your experience. You've observed that chair before, maybe. You've got a chair in your own house. You might have even sat on this very chair before. And based on those, it, those experiences, it leads to the expectation that it's going to continue to do so. So we do hope that for this analogy, the no chairs fall to pieces as we're giving this message this morning. Um, so you, you could say that you're putting your trust in that chair. Now, that's not a usual language you'd use for sitting down. Everyone take trust in the chair as you take your seat. But for this analogy, um, we're looking at that. And and from that, the phrase trust is trust is earned comes to mind. So that chair has earned your trust, or you've put your trust in that chair based on prior experiences and prior knowledge. And that you can put your trust in uh, something or someone, and that it will develop and grow over time. It, it's got potentially a starting place, but how and where does that begin? And how do we even recognise maybe that we are developing trust in something or someone at some point? And at what point do you need to then take a leap of faith in it? So you've maybe 
you know, with the whole chair thing, maybe you've seen someone else sat in that chair before. Maybe you've you've tested the waters in New York close or you've watched someone actually build it. But at some point you need to take a leap of faith and, and put your trust in, uh, in that chair. So I just want to link from one of the uh, transliterations, uh, one tran- translations of Emmet, which is trust, um, and it, that it's primary relies on um, confidence from experience. And I want to project that onto another word for uh, another translation for the word Emmet, and that is faith. Uh, and uh, faith is uh, which, uh, and faith which is um, confidence and an assurance in, in the future of what we can't see. And we're going to be pulling um, a couple of um, verses together here. Um, in the Bible, um, there's a writer called Paul, and he writes letters to different groups of Christians. And he wrote this one letter to a group of um, struggling um, um, Christians in their faith. And that's where I got that little bit of definition of, um, of faith from. So in the, in the message translation, um, it says in Hebrews 11 verse 1, the fundamental fact of existence is that trust in God, this faith, is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we can't see. And to uh, bring that into another translation, into the NIV, just to uh, help us understand this verse, it says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. So that's where faith comes in. Trust is your prior experiences and faith is leading us forward, putting our faith in something because taking a step forward. And this sort of faith really stems from recognising where God has has been dependable and and, uh, in our lives. And and it gives assurance that we can continue trusting. And you can say the same for um, your best friend, maybe. I'm sure we all have a best friend or, or someone that we could, a group of people we call our best friend. And for all of that, it's that they have demonstrated their trustworthiness over time. And you can then have faith in that person that they continue to be trustworthy and, and close and a good companion. And, but it still almost requires a leap of faith, though. You know, we're, we're putting our trust in, in someone or as we're talking about God in, in, in God that actually it still requires a leap of faith based on that foundation of trust. We can see this more observing Peter uh, in the Bible. And let me tell you a bit about, uh, about Peter himself. Um, Peter was a, a fisherman uh, from a town called per- Capernaum. And uh, this town's located on the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee. And one day he was struggling to catch uh, fish. And this wasn't the normal. This really wasn't the normal. And he was getting frustrated. He was giving up. As he, um, as he and his brother Andrew were coming back ashore from, from a day's fishing, they heard a voice on the beach telling them to throw their nets back out, but on the other side of the boat. This, honestly, even from the, well, <laughs> the most meaning, uh, well-meaning of people, wouldn't have gone down well then. This guy on the beach, didn't, they, he didn't even recognise him. He wasn't another one of the local fishermen that might be able to throw some friendly advice there to a frustrated man who had just lost an entire day's uh, worth of, of trying to fish. This was a randomer, and clearly he had no clue, and he was telling me how to do my job. He was telling Peter how to do his job. But the, the man persisted. He said, uh, he, the man on the beach cried out again, cast your nets out one more time. Peter and Andrew, uh, P, uh, Peter's brother Andrew, they, they considered what's worth one more attempt. So they put their nets, nets back out into the sea. Yeah, and, and instantly they were filled with fish. Like filled with fish to the point where this boat was starting to be dragged down and sinking. And they had to shout to some of their friends in other boats or on the shore to come and help them and, and try and bring this catch. They couldn't even land the catch in the boat. They had to drag it in the nets back to the shore. And in total that day, they caught over 150 large fish. And that's way, way, way more than they would regularly catch in a, thank you, Maxine, in a, in a usual day. Now, as they get closer, Peter, he, he jumps in to the, to, in, into the water and swims to shore 
as, as, the man, as Andrew uh, recognised the man to be Jesus. And after this miracle, uh, he, 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 greets, he greets Jesus and he spends some time with him and, and, and Jesus invites Peter to follow him along, along with some of the other men that were with him that day. So this is the backstory of the man that we watched in that video before the kids went out. The, the man who decided that he could get out and walk on that same water that Jesus was walking on. He told, Peter was in the boat and he was calling out to Jesus, if it is you, then call me out of this boat to come towards you. Peter knew that he could trust in Jesus based on the miracles he had seen Jesus do, based on the teaching uh, that he'd received, based on, uh, on, on, on him witnessing lots of different things alongside that miracle, that first miracle, the miraculous catch. But he also needed faith and confidence to take that leap, that step out of the boat, because from Peter's experience, he didn't know he could walk on water. I mean, he was a fisherman. He knew the ocean. He knew that humans can't walk on water. And it took that leap of faith to, to say to Jesus, pull me forward, let, you know, guide me forward. And he could only do that based on that trust he had in Jesus that he'd built up over a period of time. So as Christians, we... We trust that we can, that, uh, we, as Christians, we trust that because of what Jesus did in coming to earth, living his life uh, as a human on, on earth and then dying on the cross, and we believe rising from the dead, we trust that it changed our lives. We trust that it changed everything. But we also need, and we can speak from our, so, and we can speak from our experience of how uh, he has changed our life, our own individual lives, along on our different journeys. Everyone in this room will have their own little story to share, and no two stories look alike. But we trust that because of that sacrifice that Jesus made, and though he did nothing wrong, he chose to die in our place, and that is something we didn't deserve. It's something we didn't deserve, but... We trust that we live and we will live with Jesus in heaven and we'll have everlasting life through him and we'll live alongside God in perfect peace, not on this, this world as we see it because it's, a, it's, it's broken and it was perfect. But there'll be something new and there'll be no tear and no pain and it's something that we are longing for. Trust isn't without absence of doubt. Just to finish off with that, it's, it's having doubt doesn't necessarily mean that you're not trusting. Trust, as we've learned through this morning, is often built up through a series of experiences and, and interactions that, that gradually reinforce your belief in time. And it's, but it's normal to have doubts and uncertainties, particularly when you're stepping out into something new or, or unfamiliar, or you're walking through a shaky period. But then having faith is progressing alongside, even with that doubt and the questions that we might have and progressing along the way. And we ask Jesus to, to walk alongside us. And Jesus asks us to get out the boat, to put our faith in him. And as, as I went through this journey of putting these notes together. I recognise different times in my life where I've put my trust in Jesus. I've, I've had to take a big step forward. There's, and, and, and then I also have to look at different times where I've seen Jesus active in my life. And sometimes there's been big occasions. Other people have got bigger stories than me. But I've got a story where I've, I've seen Jesus walking alongside me consistently. And there's been a consistency to that presence and that, and that confidence and that assurance. And that's, that's part of my journey. But then because I've had that journey, it allows me that when I have to take those big step forward moments, that actually there's not a huge amount of fear that goes alongside it. There might be niggly doubts. You're not good enough. You're, you're only human. Actually, you know, that, that, that kind of comes along the way. That, that comes because we're human. We... We walk and we have doubts and different things. We have worries, we have pressures. 
but we, it doesn't stop us then taking that step of faith and walking in faith. So that's what I've prepared this morning. That's, that's my thoughts on, on trusting in God, trusting in Jesus, and, and then having a faith um, to, pro, uh, to progress forward.